Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another interview series for Muslim Network TV. My name is Zahra Sayed and I'll be your host for today. Joining us today, we have a very special guest, Brother Nasser Deeb, who is the director of the Halal Expo Canada. Brother Nasser is a regular guest on MNTV who is currently traveling in Manila for some very exciting work. Brother Nasser, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for also hosting me again. I am a big fan of Muslim uh, Network TV. And Brother Taha, you and the rest of the team. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back again. Excellent. So, Brother Nasser, tell me, how are you? How is your travel coming along? I would love to hear about some of the uh, the very exciting work that you're doing. Uh, it's been a lot of hustle uh, work. It's been so much uh, traveling. Um, we just came back from Gulf Food, um, then came back to Toronto for a few meetings, and then had to go back to Philippines as we're working in two ways. Uh, one is to uh, organize the first pavilion of Philippine Halal, um, and the second part is we just launched in January, uh, announced the first Halal uh, Halal Expo Philippines, part of the Halal Expo Canada brand, uh, to be the first uh, debut event in Philippines that is B two B, produced by or you know brand that's already Canadian, born Canadian brand, and we uh, because of the fact that Philippines is now moving into promoting halal. Uh, over because of their population of Muslims, like see more than 15 million Muslims. And we're taking advantage of that. We're making sure that we support the community there by bringing our expertise in halal expos and bringing it to the Philippines. And that's when, why I'm here. So it's two reasons. The first is to work on the preparation for Halal Expo Philippines, which will be in this year in November uh, 14 to 16, and Halal Expo Canada, to bring in Philippine companies to uh, May, uh, this May, May uh, 8 and 9. Uh, they're going to be the first Filipino pavilion of halal. Mashallah, that sounds very exciting and sounds like a blast. It's great to see a Canadian brand expanding so well and, you know, internationally. That's that's huge, Mashallah. So congratulations. So we'll begin by delving into the world of halal products, halal services and trends. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the Halal Expo Canada and its significance in the halal industry? Well, as, as everybody knows, the Halal Expo Canada started its first edition uh, in 2019 as the first uh, DPU event. And we were a bit spectacular about, about that, the fact that we can uh, either grow or, or shut down the idea. But, but we know back in our minds that it's, it needed uh, uh, to be here because um, the halal industry in, in Canada has been growing massively in the last 10 years, I'd say. And there was a need for a, a B2B platform to foster that growth. And that's where we, we did it the first time. People were not used to having a B2B halal expo in North America. So we were the first B2B show in North America. And so far, after going on the fourth edition, we've proven to the market that it's, a, it's the ideal platform uh, to connect and to grow products and, and, and grow markets in such amazing uh, organized market like in Canada or North America in, in general. So it's been very good uh, uh, start and now we are moving into our fourth edition and we can, we'll, we're looking to grow further and further and further. It is needed and it's important event and a platform that needs to be supported and needs to be fostered until it reaches its, its best level. I agree. I think that's very critical to ensure that we can highlight some of that, um, especially within Canada, where, you know, the Muslim majority is, you know, there's it's so diverse. Um, so in your perspective, what are some of the key highlights or some of the key themes that attendees can expect to see at this year's expo? Uh, as every year, we try to bring something new, uh, not only to the uh, uh, to the show, but to the, our exhibitors and our attendees alike, because we want to make sure that we we, we diverse our, our offerings and try to offer things that is our, our, our unique uh, to the audience. And every year we try to be more innovative uh, by adding more conference, uh, uh, rich content, uh, bringing new sessions, new ideas, new speakers. Also that cooking demo that we started last year, now we're moving into having a multiple cuisine uh, uh, chef that to cook in a halal, um, a halal way. So last year we had a brother from Singapore, a chef from Singapore, who did a great event. Um, 
and sessions of cooking uh, halal cuisines and uh, di using different spice and different ways. Now we are moving into different uh, other cultures of halal. So we are we're trying to have a, a new mix uh, and we're adding new ideas as we go. We're bringing new companies um, in new countries participating. Like Philippines, for example, will be the first time Philippines to launch its first pavilion uh, of halal, promoting a halal friendly Philippines, uh, first time in, in Canada, uh, because as the government initiated the, the roadmap of halal, the Department of Trade in Philippines have initiated the idea and now they're going into the uh, task force is moving forward with a with roadmap. To, uh, to shape the, the halal industry in Philippines. So that's one of the things also we're adding, new companies, new ideas, uh, new events, new features. Our conference will be having a different kind of sessions. And at the ordinary session, we're gonna add new ideas, new uh, uh, areas of concern in the, in the industry, the trends and, and challenges that face the industry. And also we are, uh, maybe for you to know, uh, there's gonna be an, a special session on halal media. And its challenges and how uh, how it copes in the mainstream media, um, and that's a growing trend. And like yourself, which is amazing uh, 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 channel, uh, there are more and more grow, uh, growth of these. And we need to foster these. We need to make sure they are on the right track, in the right way, to make sure that they do it right and do it as professional as even better than than other uh, uh, media channels. And that's that's there's so much to say, but. You'll see it. We will be announcing slowly as you go. You're going to be seeing our social media, our advertisement with media partners that we, we utilize our uh, them to help us uh, promote. So you will you will see. You will be uh, happy to see the show. Well, that's excellent. And like you said, it's very important to make sure that every year there's something unique that's up and coming. And it's important to highlight that as well, um, while keeping up with the demand and the trends that you're starting to see in the market. Um, so now that given your experience with traveling the world internationally and, and a lot of time, you know, spent in Manila and in Philippines, in your perspective, how has the halal market evolved uh, over the years? And what are some of the trends that you're starting to see, um, particularly in the halal industry? Uh, the growth definitely has been has been uh, outstanding, uh, and I think it's it reached a number of more more than uh, amazing number. It's like one point three trillion. Uh, sorry, to almost two trillion dollars industry. So that way you cannot even imagine how big is that industry becomes. There are many trends that are changing. We no longer discuss only food and the halal. We discuss many areas like blockchain. We discuss services that service to the halal industry, we discuss um, uh, everything that service that industry, the, 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 the space of the halal. And halal is not just uh, uh, food, it's an ecosystem that consists of so many parameters and so many uh, uh, things that we use in our everyday life and whether we do our banking or we do our finance or we do our investments or we do the way we dress, the way we, we, we go on vacation. It, it becomes more and more, you, you have many areas of halal. And as you know, the word halal is permissible. It didn't say permissible only for food, for anything that we allow to do and enjoy in this life, and in a good way, in a good blessing way. So that's what the Prophet peace be upon him he taught, taught us, and and what the Quran taught us in in, in all uh, all his teachings. So that's how we uh, we we should be living in, in that beautiful uh, ethical life or ethical living. And that's that's what I'm seeing. The trends are increasing in the IT. As I mentioned, blockchain and other things, logistically, um, on the on the on on so many services that that I'm surprised to see every time that I'm I'm I'm, I'm traveling to big shows like in, in Malaysia or big shows that I see I see things that I never thought that could be part of the halal ecosystem. But when I think about it, it does serve in some ways, and that's where halal is such a great uh, industry. You know that people are now flocking into it and trying to take advantage of it and leverage from it because whether they must or not must because it's such a amazing and, and vibrant business that uh, uh, blessed and, and, and vibrant in the meantime. You know, so brother Nasser, you mentioned um, a little bit about the Halal ecosystem. So how does the Halal Expo Canada contribute to fostering connections and collaborations within the Halal ecosystem in a bit more depth? Uh, I mean, I see it in a, in a micro and a macro level. In a macro level, uh, I see uh, when when a, when a government decides to grow into different market uh, and they want to uh, boost their their companies, manufacturer companies to in particular market like Canada, 
I see it in my own eyes, how they come in and how the embassy get involved and how everybody gets involved to support that delegation coming to the show. Like we have the Indonesian, the Malaysia in the past, you probably, a lot of you have seen them. They come and benefit and sign deals and sign contracts. That fostered the, the bilateral trades and, and the, the relationship between two countries. That's in a micro level. But in a micro level, I've seen companies that are in Canada, not talking about even overseas, but just in Canada alone. And I can share many stories. Uh, the countless of story that came to our show started very small in the halal business. And now when I come and visit them again, I see them, they expand into a big factory and a huge factory like Solma, Trio Bakery, uh, NMK uh, Kebab. All these companies, they come to our show and they start small. But when they come into our show over the years, I see them grow and grow uh, because we bring in the, the top companies like Metro Group and Loblaws and uh, Farm Boys and, and Walmart and Costco, the big buyers come into the show just to source halal product. And you know how difficult it is to connect to these people. But instead, we bring you to the show in your own booth, relax, and we bring those directors to you to source your product into their stores, not only in, in one, uh, one location. But they take it to entire Canada or the eastern province, in the eastern uh, side of Canada, or west side. And we see that happening. Uh, so the macro, as I said, is the government when they're bringing their, their companies to come to a new market. We see that growing every year. And on the micro level, we see it with the small companies, like the pop and mom, pop and mom kind of companies but that, that start small. But when they come to the show and they meet, they just have to meet one big guy like from Metro or from Adonis or from those big names. And that's it. That's enough for him. You know, just one contract, two contracts a year. He's good to go, you know, to have his product showcase on the shelf of these big, big uh, mega stores or mega or, or mainstream uh, store markets. You know, that's actually so answer your question, but that's what I, I understood from the question. It does. It does. And it's great to hear um, about the different ecosystems and the different sources and, you know, hearing about how the Alal Expo provides a channel and a great segue to expanding in the larger market. Um, so, Brother Nasser, in your opinion, how do you foresee the future of the halal industry unfolding, especially in terms of innovation and sustainability? I, I, I see that it's getting better and better every year. Uh, it's getting more regulated. Uh, it's getting more diverse than, than, than the traditional uh, food uh, uh, mindset of people that think that it's only food. So I see that growth there. I see the regulation is getting better. I see it's more control. I see... Uh, Governments are getting more involved, whether they're Muslim government or non-Muslim. As I give you an example, Philippines uh, stepped in because they uh, feel like they left out from the game of halal uh, uh, markets. So they they decided that wow, wow we, we're losing out. They got great product in Philippines, more than thousand plus products of halal, uh, but a lot of people don't know that. So now they decided in the last five or six years they've been working so hard internationally. And locally to promote halal and not only halal food, halal friendly Philippines as far as tourism. So a lot of people don't understand that. Yes, there is Malaysia, Indonesia, beautiful countries for Muslim to on Turkey, but you have to understand there are 15 million Muslims. So there are places where a Muslim family can spend a beautiful vacation in a modest, in a much relaxed setting, uh, and 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 a, and a halal way. In Philippines, and I, uh, you know, I, you know, I wish I can, if I had the time, I could have had Under Secretary Myra to tell you about what's happening in Philippines. The Under Secretary of of the Tourism Department of Tourism of Philippines, she will tell you what they're doing to to promote uh, the halal friendly tourism in the Philippines. So it's 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 so many places, so many countries, so many government, private companies, and mega companies are are getting into the So I see a growth. I see regulations being set. I see. Uh, a global intervention from uh, like Jakim and Indonesia halal certification, getting into making sure that everything is standardized, everything is quality, and to the main objective which we work for and everybody works for, and I hope everybody will will be with us in, in that is to make halal as the ultimate brand for everyone, not only for Muslim but for everybody because it's it's a good um, uh, lifestyle, it's ethical and it's clean. So that's that's where what I see that the trend, where I see the growth, 
and 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 I, I you know, I, I must say this is this is what I personally feel. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brother Nasser, for sharing your insights with us today. It's a splendid pleasure having you on the show, and we look forward to seeing the exciting developments at the Halal Expo Canada this year, inshallah. Thank you very much for, for hosting me, and I, I look forward to seeing you guys at the show because uh, we just uh, spoke to Brother Taha Gayur, and we are we having you, as again, as one of the exclusive media partners, and we will see you at the show. Uh, don't forget to visit uh, halalexpocanada.com to get more information. And uh, if you are at the, uh, uh, if you contact uh, your channel, you get a, a, a free pass through your channel. Thank you. Jazakallah, brother announcer. And thank you to our audience. Inshallah, the Halal Expo will be happening on May 8th to May 9th at the Toronto International Center. So mark your calendars and drop by with your friends and families. On behalf of the team at Muslim Network TV, thank you and have a great evening. Assalamu alaikum.